We all know that Chinese New Year is the most celebrated festival in China and in many East Asian countries, as well as by Chinese people overseas. But did you know that we've been celebrating it wrong for the past 100 years? Chinese New Year has actually been banned three times in the past century. As a result, the meaning and traditions of this festival were also lost. So what exactly happened? Now, before I dive into how and why Chinese New Year was changed, let me first give you a brief history about this festival and how it was celebrated in the past. Chinese New Year's Day, also called Yuan Dan in Chinese, is the first day on the traditional Chinese calendar, which is a lunar solar calendar based on the system developed by the Yellow Emperor more than 4,700 years ago. The Chinese New Year celebration can be a month-long event. As I mentioned in my previous video, traditionally people would start preparing for Chinese New Year from the La Ba Festival, which falls on the 8th day of the 12th month. The La Ba Festival was originally a year-end celebration for people to thank the agriculture deities, and later became a celebration of Buddha Shakyamuni's Enlightenment Day. Just like how people start getting into the holiday spirit from Thanksgiving Day here in the US, Chinese people would start doing all the preparation for the new year on this day, such as making new clothes, preparing dishes, and cleaning their houses. After the Laba festival, on the 23rd or 24th day of the 12th month, another festival known as the Minor New Year, also known as the Kitchen God Festival, will be celebrated. Chinese people believe that every home has a kitchen god who watches over them, and every year he will ascend to the heaven on this day to report his observations. So hoping that the kitchen god will say sweet things about their family, people will usually cook sweet candies to bribe him on this day before sending him off. The next important day is Chinese New Year's Eve, also known as Chuxi. It's a time for family gatherings and a large feast with fish, meat, dumplings, and New Year rice cakes, all of which people have been preparing since the Laba festival. Many people will also follow a tradition of staying up all night waiting for the New Year to come. On New Year's Day, it was finally time for the most important custom of this festival. According to written records from Chinese history, different dynasties and different regions each had their own ways to celebrate. However, there was one thing in common, and that was worshipping the heavens and ancestors. For example, in the book Treasury of the Jade Candle from the Sui Dynasty, it was recorded that on Chinese New Year's Day, people would first welcome the kitchen god's return from heaven, then the head of the family would lead everyone to worship the heavens and gods, especially the god of five grains, to thank them for taking care of the family in the past year and also pray for blessings for the coming year. In another record from the Qing Dynasty, it was written that at daybreak on New Year's Day, government officials would all go into the palace to pay respect to the emperor. Civilians would also put on their most extravagant outfits for the worshipping ceremony. They would first burn incense for the heavens, then burn incense for their ancestors, then kowtow to the elderly in the family, and lastly, give New Year wishes to neighbors and peers. If you look at the order in which people did things, you realize that traditionally Chinese people put heaven and the divine in the highest regard above everything else. This is an important piece of information to keep in mind. So when did the New Year celebration end? It usually lasted until another festival called the Lantern Festival, which falls on the 15th day of the first month. It's another big festival in China. I did a video explaining the origin and customs of the Lantern Festival. I'll put the link down below. But in short, people lit lanterns as a way to show respect to Buddha Shakyamuni's teachings. Have you noticed that the beginning and ending days of the Chinese New Year celebration, as well as the New Year Day's ritual itself, were all tied with paying respect to divine beings? Chinese people have always been very spiritual throughout history. However, something changed in the last century. The first ban came after the 1911 revolution, also known as the Xinhai Revolution. This revolution ended China's last dynasty, the Qing Dynasty. 
And then Sun Yat-sen was elected as the provisional president of the Republic of China. Sun wanted Chinese people to switch from using the Chinese calendar to the Gregorian calendar because he thought it would help China to open up and connect to the rest of the world. He made an official announcement in 1912 and designated the Gregorian New Year's Day, January 1st, as the New Yuan Dan. He also asked people to celebrate the Chinese New Year according to the Gregorian calendar. However, it was not so easy as people's daily lives were basically tied to the Chinese calendar for thousands of years. So people mostly just ignored this order and continued their traditions. By 1928, the new nationalist government tried again to make people adopt the Gregorian calendar system, this time by force. They knew that people kept using the Chinese calendar for the past decade, so they implemented a few laws which banned the buying and selling of the Chinese calendar, gave no days off on Chinese New Year, and banned all forms of Chinese New Year celebration. On the other hand, the nationalist government heavily promoted the Gregorian New Year's Day and even organized celebrations on that day. But no matter how much they tried, no one cared about the new calendar, and people were still celebrating the traditional New Year in secret. By 1934, the nationalist government finally gave in and withdrew the ban. So up until this point, no laws were able to change how people celebrated Chinese New Year. But after the Communist Party came into power in China, things took a big turn. In 1949, the Communist Party made the Gregorian calendar the official calendar in China. They also made the term Spring Festival the new official name for Chinese New Year. But this term didn't exist in ancient China, and there was already another festival called Li Chun, which literally means start of spring. That's when people would welcome and celebrate the beginning of spring. In 1967, one year after the start of the Cultural Revolution, the Communist Party made a mandate saying, there will be no days off this year for Chinese New Year, it will be made up later. However, not only were the days off never made up later, people lost their freedom to celebrate Chinese New Year and all traditional festivals for the next 13 years. According to an article published by the People's Daily, an official newspaper of the Chinese Communist Party, people who wanted to celebrate the New Year were, quote, bastards. All the traditions were, quote, filthy habits. And the only way to celebrate the New Year was to, quote, promote Chairman Mao's ideology with great effort. Unlike the last two attempts, this time the Communist Party wanted to not only ban the customs on the surface, but also to fundamentally reform people's thinking. During this period of time, families would gather on New Year's Eve and start inspecting each other's thought impurities against communist ideology. Then on New Year's Day, everyone would hold up a little red book of Mao's quotes and wish Mao to live on forever. All the New Year decorations were also switched to communist banners. At the same time, there was another movement called Destroying the Four Oats, which targeted all traditional culture, thinking, customs, and relics. Families were forced to give up everything they owned that belonged to the Four Oats, or else face dire consequences and even lose their lives. After more than 10 years of ideological reform, the Communist Party finally succeeded in eliminating the Chinese New Year. Even after the Communist Party started allowing days off again in 1980, no one in China would dare to bring up worshipping the heavens and ancestors anymore. People would only focus on eating and other trivial customs in fear of being persecuted again. The old generation chose to forget, while the young generation who grew up during the Cultural Revolution knew only to despise all the traditions. And today, their children and grandchildren have no idea what traditional Chinese culture means and how people celebrated Chinese New Year for thousands of years. And that's why I want to share with you the facts and values from genuine traditional Chinese culture because what we have lost in recent history was actually the true essence of China. It's not hard to see that ancient Chinese people were deeply spiritual. They treasured the connection between heaven and man, and this allowed them to hold a higher moral standard, knowing that everything they do is being watched and every action will be met with karmic retribution. Wouldn't it be great to have a society like this? It's far more effective than relying on laws alone. Let me know what you think in the comments below. 
And last but not least, I wish you a healthy and happy year of the tiger. See you again in the next video.